Thanks for joining me again today, guys. My eyes are slowly getting better, so I am getting the base camp ready to hit the road again. One thing that's really important to do is your regular maintenance on an RV. In your owner manual, there will be regular maintenance intervals and what they recommend. Today, I'm gonna go through that list because the base camp has been sitting here for two months, and I wanna make sure everything is set, ready to go before I hit the road. So let's jump right in and get to work. The first thing I'm going to check while I'm in here is all of my detectors. So the base camp has the smoke, the propane, and the CO2 detector. First for the smoke detector, really easy. Just hold down the test button. We're good there. Then the propane one is down here on the floor. So again, there's just a button and we're gonna press that and test it out. We got the red signs, we're good to go there. It's not showing yellow, so we don't need to replace the batteries on that yet. Now the CO2 is back here on the bedroom wall. So again, similar to your smoke detector, you just hold it and we're good. So all the detectors are working. We don't need to change any batteries there. That is loud. Now we're gonna check the windows. These windows can come loose and then they rattle when you're walking around the RV and it's a little annoying. So we're gonna make sure that they open properly and then shake it a little bit. And you can see that there's a little bit of wiggle in there. So we're gonna tighten that up. That one is still nice and tight. So we're just gonna leave that open for some ventilation. Now this is one of my least favorite things to maintain because the screws that you have to tighten are really hard to get to. You could take off the whole frame if you want, but that's a lot of work and I want to not mess with those screws and the aluminum all the time. So instead I've bought this little funky tool, which allows me to get to the Phillips head screws in there from an angle. I used to try to use some pliers and then a drill bit, but I don't know how many times I lost it into the windowsill and it was really a pain. So I think this was about 10 bucks and it's a lot easier to get back in there. So all you have to do to stop the wiggle is just tighten those four screws in there. There, much tighter. So that's good. The next thing we're gonna do is just take a Phillips head screwdriver and go around the whole base camp and check all the screws. So along the windows here, you have the buttons and those are loose. So there, those are nice and tight. Remember, don't over tighten things. You don't wanna strip anything. And then we're just gonna get all the screws in the windowsill. That one's a little bit loose. And we're just gonna go around the whole base camp, check them all and tighten everything up. For Phillips head screws, there are several around the window. All of the cargo nets are held up by them as well, as is the vent ceiling fan, the magnets for the doors, and I think that's it. Oh, the frame around the bathroom has them too. Also in the bathroom, the shower head is held up by one Phillips head. Actually, a lot of the shower frame has Phillips head in it, so a couple of the ones around the door frame were a little loose, but everything in here so far has been nice and tight. Check all the hangers in here. The clothes rack in here that pulls out, that was actually really loose. So it's a good thing we tightened that up. Now I think we're finally done with those. Next comes some good old AC maintenance. Now I've probably only used the AC maybe four times, but there's two things in the AC that I want to check. First, there are a couple of filters up there. The other item is there are four bolts up there that are actually currently under an Airstream recall because the units have flown off the roof. I haven't yet had the recall service done because I haven't been able to get into a dealer. So in the meantime, I'm just going to use a ratchet, tighten them up. In order to remove the AC filters to check them and also to access the bolts, you just need to slightly pull in on the AC cover and then pop the two tabs out. The filter then has two small plastic pieces that hold it in place. So you can just maneuver and slide the filter around those in order to easily pull them out. Actually, the filter is not that bad since I don't really use the AC. So that side is good but this is where we access the bolts too. All right, we got the 516 ratchet. We're gonna tighten up those bolts. All right, you don't wanna over tighten them just like the Phillips heads, but you wanna make sure they are good and snug. Well, those were really loose. So I'm glad we're tightening them up. And in case I didn't mention it before, this is just a simple 516 ratchet and I just have the extender on there. So it's really easy to get up into the AC unit. I can't believe how loose that was. All right, that is it. The AC is secure, clean, 
and ready to go. The next thing that's really important is battery maintenance. I have lithium batteries, so they don't require any maintenance. I have the battery monitor, I can check on them. They're completely fine. So I really don't need to get in there to do any maintenance, but I just wanna get into the box, make sure everything looks good in there, make sure the connectors look good, and everything is all set. Now the battery box in here is not easy to get to. So unfortunately, I actually have to pull everything out of my kitchen. It's also a great time to clean the cupboard and get everything out of there. All right, this is a little bit of a pain. So the batteries are actually right here, but my inverter covers the battery cover about that much. And then also in the back, there's a panel you have to pull out, which is where my solar controller, the wiring, everything like that is hidden. So it's gonna take me a little while to get in here. I probably don't check this area as often as I should just because of how much of a pain it is. I guess my light is dead. The nice thing is for the light that I usually have in there, it's the same light I use in my storage covers for my clothes. So I'm just gonna take that guy and pop it in there. All right, first things first, we need to remove the covers for the screws so we can even get to the screws. Then we're gonna remove the screws, remove the different covers and get to the battery box. All right, not that I really know what I'm doing down here, but we got a um, screw just floating around. Everything there looks good. There's no corrosion or anything on any of those. I'm gonna get a paper towel and just wipe things down a bit. All right, everything in there looks good. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but I don't know too much about electrical. But the biggest thing I was trying to do is make sure that there was no dirt or water or anything getting into the battery box. I wanted to make sure that the connections I could see were tight. The 12 volt tank heaters, the three connections on the back of that were pretty loose. So I just clipped those back in. There's also no mouse poop in there, which is good because once I had the electric fridge installed and those front vents covered, I haven't had mice in here since. There are two areas in the back you have to seal. So we'll go through that in another video, but everything in there is looking good. While everything is out, I am taking the opportunity to clean because dust does get back in this cupboard. So it gets pretty dirty. All right, this next maintenance item is new to me because I read my owner's manual for the first time in a long time. And there is a strainer on the water pump, which is in this little cubby down here. And you have to pull the strainer off and clean it. So we're gonna try this out. I don't see any water leak debris. They don't make getting to this stuff easy, that is for sure. While I have everything torn apart, you can see how messy this bench is, but I'm going to sit here on the table and just check in on the Truma. So again, I don't really know too much about the Truma other than basic troubleshooting from issues I've had with it in the past. But a reason that it's really important to check the Truma is in the base camp, there's only three vents that come out of the Truma, but the Truma has four ports. There's actually one port that just has a cover on it. When I had my Truma replaced, the dealer did not put that cover back on. And I actually have markings on my floor from where the heat was hitting it. And it looks like char marks. So I was in the middle of the woods and I thought my RV had almost burned down. It wasn't the fact that it almost caught on fire. That's just because the laminate floor reacts to a lower temperature than it actually takes to cause a fire. But I did need to get that vent cover and pop it on the Truma. So now whenever I have this bench open, I just check in on the Truma in here. I make sure all four vents are nicely tight and connected. I'm going to sneak in between these two tables. <laughs> this is a small RV van. And we're gonna just check everything in here. All right, that is the vent cover right there. Again, no mouse poop, which is good. This switch is in the on position, which is great because, oh my gosh, the dust. Um, sometimes that switch gets put into the off position accidentally, something hits it, and then the Truma doesn't work. So, the Truma should work fine. One of the things I'm gonna do before I hit the road is actually run all the appliances, and then I'll know I'll be good to go. Even though it's summer, and I probably won't need the heat for another couple of months. Now when I put the cushions back, I try to push them as far forward as possible. And the reason is because I leave the bed down most of the time, and I wanna leave that gap between the cushions and the back door. So when I do have to turn on the heat, the heat can come up out of that gap. And then I can pull this back. Eh. Oh, 
Done. Okay. Everything's tightened. Oh, we gotta tighten this. This light here tends to come loose, as you can see. So it's pretty easy. There's two Phillips head screws here. You gotta pull those off. This pops down and then there's just a nut that you tighten up. That tightens the whole thing and then you put it back together. So they're actually pretty long screws. So it takes a little while to get them all out. I turned the propane on. So we're gonna turn on this Truma here. This is hard to do one handed. And we're just going to make sure that it works. Probably have to turn it way up in order for it to even kick on. So we're gonna put it at 85 degrees and we're gonna see if it kicks on. Hopefully these glasses don't look too weird because I accidentally put something on them last time I moved the RV. So they're a little crooked on my face. All right, the little flame on here is going on and off, which means that it should be kicking on. So we're gonna leave the heat on and just make sure that it doesn't air out. First thing we are going to do on the exterior maintenance is just use some white lithium grease and lube up a whole bunch of different things. So the first thing that we're gonna do here on the door is the handle and the lock because that can get a little stiff. Thankfully, I did this not too long ago. So when you close it, it actually closes. But sometimes you will take the base camp door, you will lightly tap it shut and it'll just bounce back open because it needs some grease in there. So you just add some grease into the whole mechanism and it makes it work a lot better. Next, we are gonna get the hitch step. For all of this, you can use dry graphite. I was just recommended the white lithium grease by one of the Airstream dealers. So it's what I have, it's what I've been using. And this tube has been lasting me a really long time. So with the step, I also just put the white lithium grease around the moving parts, move the step around, shake it so it really gets in there and then wipe off the excess. Now again, we're going to put some grease into this hitch lock here. This can get really, really hard to move. So if you keep the white lithium in there and keep it greased up, it really helps. You can also use Rust-Oleum paint to paint over some of the rust. I painted the whole frame about a year ago and it's actually holding up pretty well. But that would be something in the maintenance that if I walk around the hitch, see a lot of rust, I would scrape it, sand it off, and then repaint the whole thing with Rust-Oleum paint. The good news is there's a lot of hot air coming out of here. So the Truma is working, everything there is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this guy off. Now let's talk about tires, bearings, brakes, all of that fun stuff. So your wheel bearings, you need to get them repacked on the base camp every 10,000 miles. I don't do them myself. I've never done it before. I'm not experienced. I'd rather leave it up to the professionals. I don't take it into a dealer. I just take it into a trailer shop with really good reviews. They repacked both bearings for me. They also checked the brakes, which are in good condition, and they adjusted them. So brakes and bearings are good, ready to go. I did buy an extra jack foot when I was there. So with the cost of the jack foot, the bearing packing and the brake adjustment, it was $130. Then for the tires, this is something I do quite often. You want to check your PSI, make sure your PSI is within range of what your tire is rated for. You also wanna do a visual check. I actually do a visual check of the tires whenever I'm towing and I stop for gas. That way if I pick up a nail or if something starts to bulge or if there's a crack or anything at all, hopefully I can see it before it causes an issue. So looking at the tire real quick, I don't see any cracks. I don't see any bulging or nails or anything that looks abnormal. You also want to check the tire tread. This still has significant tread on it, so we are good there. Let's check the tire pressure. These are the 235-75R15 tires that come on the X package. All right, so I am at 44 on this guy, so I do need to fill these up a little bit. This tire also looks good, so visual inspection on this is good. Also 44 PSI. So they're low, but they're actually even. So I don't have a concern of one of the tires having some sort of crack or deflating or anything. They're actually both low at the same capacity. So let's get these guys filled up. I usually run them at 50 PSI. I did just recently purchase a tire pressure monitor system. It's not on here yet. So I'm gonna get these guys inflated to where they need to be. And then later on, I'll get that tire pressure monitor system on here 
and then I'll just have a little dashboard in the Forerunner that I can keep an eye on the pressure in the future. Now the Forerunner has an onboard air compressor that I had installed. So it's a dual ARB air compressor, perfectly capable of filling up the RV tires as well as the Forerunner tires. So I'm just gonna use that to fill it up, it makes it really easy to do. <laughs> The cord is about a foot short, so I have to move the whole Forerunner to get this other tire. Woohoo! Just need it. I put a little bit too much in, so I'm just letting out a little bit. So we can hit 50 PSI exactly. And we are good to go. Alright, next thing that we are doing is checking the torque on the lug nuts on the tires. You should do this every once in a while. Also, I just had the wheels repacked, so they suggest doing it every 10, 25, and then I think 50 or 100 miles once you get the trailer going. So I'm probably about 10, 15 miles from where I got it done. So we're going to check it right here. And then I do carry this torque wrench with me and we'll just keep checking it down the road when I hit the road. So in my toolkit that I carry with me, I carry the three quarter inch adapter, which fits right onto these lug nuts. These are the Base Camp X aluminum rims. So they do suggest torquing them to 110, according to the owner's manual, 100 for the steel rims. So check your owner's manual, make sure that you have the right torque poundage for whichever rims you have. Okay, and then here on the actual handle, is where you adjust it up to 100 and then 10. So we're set at 110. Make sure that it's set the right way. That's it. We just torqued them. One more tire item to check is the spare tire here. So this can come loose, especially if you're going up and down on a lot of dirt roads. Mine is good and solid. You can also use a three quarter socket to raise and lower the spare. And you can just check, make sure all of that works and that everything's good at the spare. Little tow vehicle maintenance. So one thing you do wanna check is just to make sure that all the connection points for your hitch to your tow vehicle, so your bolts are good and secure. I have heard stories where people go under here to check it and things are loose. So definitely go in here, check them out, make sure everything's nice and tight. All right, two cleaning items that you should do that we are not doing today is one, you should walburize the outside of your Airstream. They recommend twice a year. I've lived in this now for three years and I've honestly actually never walburized it. So I purchased the liquid walburize from Amazon. It'll be here on Tuesday. And then when I hitch up and hit the road, I'm just gonna find one of those big truck car washes and wash it on the road with that. The other thing that I'll get when I'm in that car wash is up on the roof is a solar. And for sitting here underneath these trees for so long, I know I have sap and stuff on my solar, meaning it won't be as efficient as I need it to be. Another part of the cleaning is to condition this plastic because you can see it really starts getting used looking. So I just use this back to black, wipe it on. Looks almost as good as new. Final cleansing maintenance that I need to do on here is cleaning the freshwater system. I just have the Camco freshwater cleaning chemical. I put it right into the tank. I usually try to put it into the tank between RV parks so it can slosh around in there, really clean it out. I'll do that with the black tank as well. I'll put clean water in there, let it slosh around between RV parks. And then I will dump both the fresh tank and the black gray tank when I'm there. It is a whole lot easier to do when you have full hookups. So when I do that maintenance, usually I'll book two RV parks back to back. That way I can just make sure I get the maintenance done, make it the easiest for me. Next, we are gonna walk around and check all the seals. So the seals are something that you should check regularly just to make sure that everything is nice and tight. You're not gonna get any leaks. This one is getting a little cracked here. So I'm gonna have to get more of that black sealant and seal this up check the roof, make sure all the seals up there still look good. And seals are something that's pretty easy to just fix yourself. I don't have any of the proper sealant here, so we're gonna simply do an inspection today. And then if I need to buy some, I just buy it straight from the Airstream Life Store. I do wanna check all the seals on the roof, but I can't get the ladder out right now to check them. So when I do have a ladder, I would use that, check all the front, make sure the seals around the air vent, everything up there are not cracked and everything looks good. We're getting close. Two more things to check. So next is the breakaway switch. You can Google a few different ways to check this. I'm just going to check if the power is even going to it right now. And I'm gonna do that through watching my battery. 
and seeing if it has a draw when I pull the pin. When I go to actually hook up the Forerunner, I am going to pull it and actually test the brakes at that point. I will also check all of the brake lights, the brake controller, everything like that. But for today, since we are unhooked, I am simply going to keep an eye. I have one amp of current currently growing out. And then I'm just going to pull the switch. Maybe I'm not gonna pull the switch. Oh my gosh. That was really hard to do. But we got it out. You don't wanna leave it out for very long, but we are pulling six amps and that is the correct amount. So we are going to slide this right back in here. Even much easier to pop in than it is to pull out. And we are back down to one amp. So we are getting power to the breakaway switch. The breakaway switch is working. That takes a lot of strength to pull out for the first time. So that's tested. We'll test it again when we're actually hooked up. Finally, you should take contact cleaner and spray it into your seven way pin. Also where this connects to in the truck. And I used to carry contact cleaner in the Forerunner. I went to go look for it and it's not there. So I'm gonna have to buy some contact cleaner offline. And then you just simply spray it right into these connection points and it really helps. When I store the seven way pin, I just store it down. I believe you can get covers for it as well, but I store it down so nothing gets stuck to that contact cleaner and that stays nice and clean. You can also get a little metal brush if you ever wanted to really clean out any corrosion or anything in there. I did have to do that once because my brakes weren't working, but since I use regular contact cleaner going forward, I haven't had an issue. All right, those are the maintenance type things that I do and keep up to date with on the base camp. My hair is a mess after crawling around underneath it. Before I hit the road, I am going to be doing a full deep clean. So you can see that the bed is stripped. I'm washing that. All of the pillows here are stacked up. I'll also check the tire pressure in the trailer and the Forerunner one more time the day that I'm hitting the road just to make sure everything is good and we are set to go there. So this is what I do. Always check your owner's manual and make sure that you are doing everything that they recommend. It can depend on model. It depends on your use. So this video is really more of just a recommendation to let you know what I have checked before I hit the road again. If you have any questions on anything I did today or if there's any other maintenance items that you do on your base camp that you want to share with other owners, feel free to comment below. So thanks for tuning in everybody. Really appreciate it and we'll see you next time.